Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems by biased collection, of course, as usual. And um, today I would like to talk about a theorem or a bunch of theorems actually that I usually like to call the n plus one and minus one theorem. And um, we will come back to that. I shifted things a little bit to make it nicer. But there are a lot of theorems of the form that it contains an n or a lot of countings. We'll see a lot of countings today that contain uh, those two funny numbers. And n is essentially the sample size, if you want. And it's kind of interesting. So whenever you see that, you should be aware that there's something nice going on. And well, as I said, kind of the main point is that there are many, many different things counted by the same type of fu nice formula. It's a really nice formula. Um, but I will, of course, just focus on one of them. Maybe not, of course, but I will focus on one of them. And I will just explain one of them kind of carefully, the easiest one in some sense and just mentioned the other ones. But um, whenever you see this formula, we'll see that formula later, you should be aware that this is like, this is one of the classical formulas in counting. It's kind of very surprising that a lot of things have the same easy type of count formula. I will comment on that in a second, or well, maybe not in a second, but I will comment on that as we go along. And I really want, only want to count certain types of objects that are called trees. Um, if you don't remember what a tree is, a tree is something like this. So I take a graph and I just want to gr my graph to have no no cycles, right? I have, want to have something like this and I don't want to have something like that because then I would have a little cycle down here. No, no, we don't like that. But anything that has no cycles, a tournament tree or certain types of um, uh, a kind of methane and ethene here, a butane or something like that, they form a nice trees with some carbon atoms in the middle and then some hydrogen atoms around. So a tree is really kind of an, the easiest type of graph, if you want. You just draw a certain number of vertices, and the tree always has, uh, well, we can we can do the count here. So here's a tree, a very boring one. This one was a very boring tree. But anyway, um, maybe I draw another tree, one, two, three, four, five, just to convince you that it's maybe not completely trivial. So here, this is not a completely trivial tree, and this has four edges, this has four edges. And five both have five vertices. So the trees always have one fewer edge the, uh, edges than vertices. And essentially, you can think of a tree as kind of being a minimal connected graph. So it's kind of the easiest type of graphs that appear. They have no relations, if you want. They have no uh, cycles. And I think of cycles as being relations. So a, a standard task the human brain wants to do, because the human brain likes counting, is well, count them, right? We all like counting, counting different things. Count count the number of primes. So that's a sophisticated one. Count the number of flies on my window. There are a lot of flies on my window. I could count them. Um, anyway, something like that, right? We like to count something. Count the number of cars, count the number of whatever. And here's an easy thing. Here's this kind of something that looks nice. It's kind of if you're into graphs, into networks, uh, by the way. Mathematician call them graphs. Everyone else would probably call them a network. Anyway, they're the easiest type of networks and count them, right? So just depending on the number of vertices, how many are there? Okay, so uh, and if you start off, it's actually not so, so difficult, this task. So here are some more examples of trees and they're ordered by the number of vertices. So two, one just means there's one tree with two vertices, three, one, there's one tree with three vertices and then we have four, one, four, two, there are already four, two non-trivial ones. And then five, one, five, two, five, three. So our sequence starts off as one, uh, one, well, there's also one just with, okay, I'm, I'm ignoring the, the boring tree, which is just a vertex. There's just one, 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 let's just call it one, one. There's just one of them. There's one with two, there's one with three, there are two with four, there are one, two, three with five. Starts off pretty slowly. And then there are one, two, three, four, uh, five, six with six and then the, the, the next one is seven is 11 and so on and the usual kind of the type of question people like to ask is how does the sequence continue maybe we can write down a nice formula for the number of trees it sounds to me like a reasonable question that people definitely would have thought about for a while but it turns out and it looks like when you're counting trees it's kind of the easiest type of graphs so if you can't solve this counting problem, you probably can't solve any counting problem relating to graphs. It turns out that this counting problem is like really difficult and it's like really shittily difficult. <laughs> it's just, it's not just that there is no, no nice formula, yeah, 
whatever that means, whatever nice means, there is no known formula to count the number of trees, but also something like something weaker, like an asymptotic rate, which, which doesn't really count, but it only gives you uh, the kind of the gross rate of the thing. Even the asymptotic formula for the number of trees is like completely insane. Um, it's it's this, this guy down here, and it contains uh, two kind of, two probably transcendental numbers, so nobody knows whether they're transcendental, but they are probably transcendental, uh, giving the overall gross rate and the scalar in front. And one, you can compute one of them from the other. So people usually call um, one of them, doesn't matter which one, you can compute one of the other, but one of them is called the tree constant, which is essentially saying this, this constant only turns up when you look at counting trees. So there is an extra constant for counting trees, giving the asymptotic formula, and that constant is like shit <laughs> in the sense of it's, it's transcendental, and I don't know where, whether it appears anywhere else. It's not like pi that appears everywhere, it's just completely random, just completely randomly popping up if you want to count the number of trees. Okay, summarized, not just is the counting the number of trees way more difficult than you would anticipate it to be, so there is no, there's probably no formula, that you can really write down, but also just any approximation of it is still terrible, right? So any approximation of it, like, like the asymptotic formula, is still not very nice. It's kind of a really strange thing. So you just think of, I, I just at least naively, maybe if we count trees, we should expect something nice going on. But it turns out, no, it's just, just a really bad problem to count uh, trees. So people knew that, of course, for a long, long time, and I would just stop the others counting those things is impossible. But then comes the kind of fun fact. You make the problem looking more difficult and you get a better answer. And that sometimes happens. And here's a cool example where that actually happens. Making the problem more difficult and get a much better answer than the shit down here with the, with the tree constant appearing uh, in the calculation or in, 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 the, in the formula. And how do I make the problem more co co complicated? Well, we could think of trying to color to color the trees and then count it up to a number of colors. Okay, so uh, by, by that I really mean if you have n vertices, like four vertices here, I would have four colors, let's say, uh, what is it, yellow here, and then there's red, and then there's blue, and then there's green, and you just color the vertices and just distinguish the different trees. So all the bunch up here, right, remember, with four, oops, well, here we are, with four we only have two different trees, but co as colored trees, we have way, way more trees. Right? This coloring here is different from this coloring, is different from this coloring, is different, and so on. So you count colored trees. Here you can see that very clearly. So here, uh, the blue node could be the left node, the right node, or the top node. So you get three different uh, colorings here. And keep in mind, well, you can, might say, okay, the other nodes could be um, kind of interchangeable as well. So you get six. But no, for example, uh, if we count them up to coloring, so this tree with blue here, red here, and green here is really just the same as the one next to it. So we count them to graph isomorphism if you want. So if you just rearrange the graph and, it's, and you get the same result, then they, they, we only count them once. This one is this one. But up to rearrangement, we just count the number of colored trees. And now something funny happens. So here, this is two vertices, this is three vertices, this is four vertices. Uh, with one vertex, you just have a vertex. So the sequence now looks one, one, three, and then what is it? Four times four, 16. The next one is one, two, five. Um, that's a bit big, doesn't fit on the slide, but you can easily kind of list them all. It's not so difficult. The next one is whatever. But these numbers look much better. So um, as a trained mathematician, you will recognize them immediately, maybe not even as a trained mathematician. A lot of people who like math will recognize, for example, that 16 looks like a power of two, one, two, five looks like a power of five, three looks like a power of three. And if you if you want to count one as a power of two, namely two to the zero, then that actually works. So here's two to the zero, three to the one, uh, four squared, right, and five cubed. And that's a pattern I understand. Two to the zero, three to the one, four squared, five cubed. And that's kind of interesting. Well, you can guess what the next one is. It's probably six to the four, right? And yeah, it is. And this is kind of interesting because you make the problem more complicated by allowing colorings, um, but you get a much better answer, like a much better answer. It's a really beautiful answer. 
which is this n plus 1 n minus 1 theorem. So here's here's the beginning of uh, the 125 trees with five vertices. I can't fit them on a slide, but I think it looks a little bit like very relaxing, a little bit I had not that if you want. Anyway, um, the number of colored trees is this n plus 1 n minus 1 thing. It's a really simple formula. So let's have a look. n plus 1 to the n minus 1. So 2 to the 0 is always, the, the exponent is always 2 lower than um, the base. So 2 to the 0, 3 to the 1, 4 to the 2, 5 to the 3, 6 to the 4, whatever, and so on. It's like a ridiculously nice answer. Okay, usually, let me just mention that, it's not really important, but usually you see that as n to the n minus 2 as a formula, which is of course just the same, the base and exponent are shifted a little bit, but, I, I, but shifted by a factor 2, but I really like to think of it as the n plus 1, n minus 1 theorem, um, whatever. And the proof is actually not difficult, and they're, they're really short sometimes, and compared to, compared to the original problem, trying to count the number of trees, which is like, eh, <laughs> We are not going to do that. It's actually then really, really, really simple, which is beautiful. It's kind of beautiful. You make the problem more difficult and you end up with a nicer answer. With not just a nicer answer, you end up with some answer instead of compared to some shit, some random shit, if you count just the number of trees. Okay. And this kind of formula is kind of very famous in combinatorics. It shows up in many, many places. So whenever you see that, you should be aware that there's a lot of things that are counted by the same uh, thing, which is exactly why I wanted to shift it a little bit for the tree, because usually it's n to the n minus 2, as I said. Anyway, there are a lot of things that are counted by the same. The number of bases that can be made from certain certain vectors, for example, cl a classical one is not going to explain what those are, but a classical one is parking functions. So uh, the theorem of the day has a very nice theorem of the day. It's a really cool website um, that you can just open. And it has a very nice uh, kind of parking function uh, formula. So the point of the theorem of the day is they publish a theorem every day or they have a theorem for every day. Um, let me just open the website for you. So if you just do that, you just Google it, theorem of the day. It's a really beautiful website. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, zoom, 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 zoom. And you can always go to today's theorem, for example, or the list of theorem. And yeah, whatever. They have they have a lot of really, really beautiful theorems, which is part of uh, this site definitely inspired my little series on um, the, what is my favorite theorem. It's not the theorem of the day, but my favorite theorem. Um, but anyway, so they have a really nice summary of those packing functions. They're counted by the same thing. Uh, number of rooted forests counted by the same thing. Number of bases counted by the whatever counted by the same thing. There's um, on the on if you go to the online integer sequences and you just type in the numbers, it's kind of really easy to type in the numbers here, whatever one one three sixteen one hundred twenty five. You will find like a, a trillion more uh, equivalent uh, form kind of equivalent problems. They look very different and they all have the same count. Uh, so that was my take on the n plus one and minus one theorem. And the n plus one and minus one theorem is really just whatever is counted by the formula n plus one to the n minus one. And there are many things that are counted by it, like uh, the number of colored trees, not the number of trees, the number of trees is pretty shit. The number of colored trees is, for example, counted by that formula. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.